Welcome to the Seriously Social Podcast with your host, Simone Douglas. Our guest this episode is Steve Hubbard from Diffie Social. He chats with Simone about life, social media, and the differences between marketing and sales. Okay, so welcome to this week's episode of Seriously Social, the podcast. Today I'm joined by the fabulous Steve Hubbard from Diffie Social. So I know it always seems a little bit strange when you have people who do what you do in the space that you play on on your podcast. For some people, it doesn't seem strange to me. But um, Steve, you're based in Melbourne, but you service clients all around the country. You have a team that runs all around the country. Give me the Cliff Notes version as to how you ended up on the podcast today. The Cliff Notes version. Well, the first thing I think I ended up on the podcast because you have a um, a support person there that surname's the same as mine, Hubbard. What a great name! You don't see that very often. Um, and so that was the first thing that attracted my attention, I think, to a post on LinkedIn. But you and I had spoken before, and I know, um, and, and one of the best things you ever said, and it's probably a little bit of um, uh, along the lines of your opening um, then was that you know you and I both um, have a very similar sense I think to doing business and so relationships before sales we're both involved in B&I and business networking and so um, the reason I'm here today is to actually record a conversation between you and I just in case we say something smart and then um, well, and that will be really advantageous. Yeah absolutely <laughs> uh, so it's been interesting I suppose for me this week um, in that I have had to really leverage my networks this week, which happens every now and again, I think, for everybody. Uh, But I went and bought a house with my partner, Alex, and we moved Uh in together, which means we're amalgamating two houses, which is always entertaining. Uh, But in typical fashion, we got the keys and we, you know, went in through the front door and we discovered that the bright, shiny object was perhaps not as bright and shiny as we thought. And so I had to then... Uh You know, we've got to rip up floors and paint walls and do things like that. Um, right. I thought it was a really good analogy in terms of how um, that happens with social media and marketing agencies quite often. So obviously not yours or mine, but they, they tend to be these bright, shiny objects that promise the world. What advice would you give to someone that's looking to retain an agency about what are some of the questions that they should be asking to uncover whether they're all that or not so much. Yeah, I hear you. Look, I first, the, probably the best answer, firstly, I also hear you around the house. I remember getting a, um, a townhouse down in Denmark, which is south of Western Australia. And the first night we ever went down, it was a holiday. Um, it was almost like a timeshare, but we did invest in it. Um, but I remember the first night lying in bed and and there was the most loud noise. And, and we were like, my God. God, this is like paper thin walls. We've paid for this place. And oh my God. Anyway, I think that's called you need a cooling off period sometimes, right? Um, but to your point, like we're, a, we are unabashedly not an agency. So we're, a, we're a consultancy realistically. So I'm a, I'm a social media marketing consultant that's very niche. And we, we serve, um, to be quite honest, small businesses that most agencies probably wouldn't want to serve. So probably that's the first thing to say to your question. Um, and so what we do though get is, um, um, and we get a bit excited about it, although sometimes a bit frustrated as well, is those ones that have been with agency um, and um, particularly, say, a trade that's grown um, or others um, that have um, really been taken for a bit of a ride, right? So yeah. one of our sort of key cultures is we're no smoke and mirrors here, right? So mm-hmm. ultimately we tell people how it is. Um, we often tell people that they might not be ready for us potentially, um, but we also don't go and um, suggest to them, um, ultimately we're marketers. So I'm, I'm yeah. a practicing marketer my guys in the different uh, territories are also graduate marketers Um, and so we apply marketing principles most businesses just call that business by the way most businesses call marketing 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 communications Mm. so technically speaking we are social media marketing communications consultancy (laughs) made up of marketing consultants right but yeah so what we do do is promise what we aim to deliver right for them which is basically competitive advantage around social media marketing and and as you said it is unusual but um you know realistically you um one of the reasons why you and i um i think um connect and kind of is because we get it right so we are very we're we're strictly niche right six channels Facebook advertising. Mm-hmm. That's it. 
Um, and so we'll set them up, we'll revise them, and then we'll plan and then we'll manage and we'll report. You guys will create content. You'll do a lot more that we would do. So you got more that digital. Yeah. So I would, I reckon you should be called digital media. Okay, a yeah. okay. But anyway, that would just be my um, su suggestion. I'd have but to the, rebrand. the <laughs> yeah, but the you know you'd have to rebrand. But but it is often we spend a lot of time having to quantify with people what social media is from our context. And I think and you would find this as mm. well. We're of a sim similar genre in terms of or, or whatever you call it. Um, Age, yeah, we're but old. Our, our <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our clientele that we're working with um, often need quite a lot of um, education around it because yeah. they don't know the difference between internet marketing, digital marketing, social media marketing, my website, mm. photography, content creation, da da da. They got no clue, right? So, I mean, well, I shouldn't say no clue, but they often there is they don't know what they don't know. And then, as you said, there can be people that could take advantage of that, mm. right? And, and often charge them way too much for what they're going to deliver. So yeah. I hope that was a, a bit of a segue into what you were asking me around, um, particularly for the small business owner. Um, yeah, be very careful. You, you know, there's plenty of ways that you can shop around nowadays to make sure um, that you are getting the best, um, best value for what you're seeking. Yeah. Right. So um, I think, and, and I know, and you, I'm sure you find the same and you can tell me um, is that, uh, you know, often you just need to do the education to start with. There's no, I, I, if I go into a full diatribe around what the benefits of social media marketing and Facebook advertising might be, I may as well speak a slightly different language. Right. Yeah. So, so we keep it pretty simple. We use six, six channels. It's all about getting tens of thousands of eyeballs uh, into thousands of, recall you know brand awareness into yeah. engagement and 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 traffic through the website ultimately they might get disappointed when we say well we're not going to sell it for you though yeah ultimately at the end of the day we're marketers we're not mm. salespeople. Well, right? you need to close it yep. i had a guest on a while ago um who was a client quite some time ago um and his biggest problem was the leads came in the door but their sales process was broken at the time and so they weren't converting the leads. So they're spending all this money pulling all these people through the door and then it was falling down in the sales process because they weren't being nurtured the right way. So, mm. yeah. And so do you find at times that you save people money by actually doing it and then going, hey, this isn't working the way we would expect it to yeah. because of this, right, yeah. or because maybe you need to do that? Um, I yeah, think so, I've accidentally yeah. become a, more of a sales coach or trainer as much as I have become like a marketer or a digital mm. marketer. So I, it's, I, it comes from having so many different businesses myself mm. too. So I will tend mm. to sit down and say, all right, realistically, here are all of your roadblocks to a sale right now. Mm. And these three here are critical. You need to fix those before you pay me any money to do anything because there's no point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think, um, you know, we often sort of say that we can, you know, if people are start up and they're creating their websites and, you know, we can do the setup around the socials, but the reality is it may not be timely to be, um, you, you know, doing your planning session yet until you've actually let it bed down. Yeah. <laughs> You're actually, and, and then the other thing is you would do this because again, you're broader, right? Mm -hmm. Is that where does social media sit in the marketing house, if you like, or the yeah. business strategy house, where does it sit? Um, and then, um, you know, have you got your act together at the moment? And, and what else are you doing? Right. I was actually having this conversation before we started, right. We talked about, you know, I meet up with my marketers once a week and yeah. we do a one-to-one -one and, you know, and we're no different to any other business. You know, at the end of the day, we still need to close, right. We can yeah. do, we, 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 we could be the best social media marketers and Facebook advertisers and BNI networkers, but at the end of the day, we need to close. Mm -hmm. Right. And I was talking about the fact that, I put my hand up. I'm you're probably already getting it already. I'm a much better talker than I am at listening, right? <laughs> right? You probably already hear that, right? Mm. Um, but just about every time, and you could tell me, but um, a lot of salespeople and business coaches will tell you the trick of the sale. First, you got to ask, right? You got to yeah. ask for a sale. Mm. But secondly, you got to listen. Yeah. <laughs> right. There's listening. a really good book called Persuasion, which is like all mm. about sales. Uh, and mm. there's a chapter in that where it talks about um, this guy followed around the leading sales guys of security systems, so home security systems, 
uh, to try and work out. So the, there was this one guy that was out selling everybody else by three times. So, and they couldn't work out what it was. So he followed him around and he finally worked out that he was doing like soft closes on the way through. So he would go in to people's homes because it's security. So they'd let him in, you know, and he'd sit down, he'd start talking to them and they'd do a bit of an assessment. And what he would do is he would say, oh, I've just left um, something that I need in the car. Um, I'm going to go and grab it. Do you mind if I let myself back in um, once I've grabbed it? And they would always say, yes, absolutely, that's fine. And so what he'd got them to do was to subconsciously give him permission to enter their homes, like under his own mm. steam. Um, and by doing that, it had created this subconscious link of like that he was – part of the fabric of the house and therefore Mm. they were more likely to close the deal and it was just the tiniest little thing so it really got me thinking about you know what you were talking about which is listen to the customer pay attention to where the customer's attention is going because we often if we get caught up in our sales pitch we're busy selling what we think they want not finding out what they need so yeah and we and, and just to your point um is that you also want to find out what is working for them as well right so we often particularly as marketers we want to come in and fix a problem right what's the problem you know people aren't seeing me or my or my competitors are doing this that and the other right but often there's a number of things that they do now b and i is a great example i say you're a business network you're getting a lot of referred business as a result of b and i great right so sometimes it's keep doing that (laughs) you know what i mean so sometimes you need to hear okay well that's great that'll that'll win it's good for us to know that right so um yeah so we do try and glean out you know and that's you know an example of as you said so for that sales example that was working and so then how do you share that within the other members in that team so they then you know they use a similar approach funnily enough i did go to a uh, over here one of the big growing councils is melton council Mm -hmm. And the one guy that I hooked up with at the end of the night and had a chat with had home security. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he was a super guy. He, yeah. act- he actually had his, um, he was a former pastor of Hillsong Church. So he, okay. um, I have just happened to be a Christian as well. So he must yeah. have had his, his radar on for someone <laughs> that um, he should have a chat with. And we had a brilliant conversation, right? Yeah. Just around, you know, being yeah. in business and that sort of stuff. But I'm definitely going to tell him about that little um, idea little, of, you know, are map. you doing this already? Yeah. This sounds like a good way that you can get trust and <laughs> Yeah, that's you know, it. It's in cultivating the, business. the subconscious thing of trust. And I think as marketers, how we do that is by having honest conversations in plain English that are devoid of jargon. So mm. I know um, that by keeping it simple and, like you said, by giving a bit of education, um, it allows our potential customers to trust us. But more importantly, we make friends with the business owners that we meet, whether they're customers or not. So what would be your piece of advice to uh, someone who's maybe, you know, like they're two, three years into business, they're a little bit established and they, they want to grow um, so that they're not doing all the work themselves anymore. From a marketing perspective, um, where would you get them to start? Yeah, well, that's actually a um, very good point. I actually had one of my marketers say, I'm finding that I'm getting a number of these people that – um, are sole traders um, in B and I, and when I'm doing my one to one, they're sort of interested, but they're not interested because they feel like they're already too busy. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, um, and so that's a really interesting, um, an interesting sort of scenario, right? Because to your point, right? So while you're um, you know, it took me a while, right? So I, I remember, I don't know if we've talked about this before, right? But I, I have a sport and recreation background. Mm-hmm. So in local government, so my, my undergrad was in sport and rec. And so I spent 15 years in, in a boom council in Western Australia in Rockingham, and then spent two years um, in a, what they call brownfield. So pretty much built out um, bottom for difficult council here in Melbourne. Mm-hmm people could google if they wanted to but it was a terrible working environment right um and so just toxic and so that's what drove me to go back and be, do study marketing so i studied yeah. a master's in marketing and um and there's not too many people that tread that path let me tell mm. you that go from local government marketing. into marketing no, right no. Yeah. and so um so 
I am going to get to your point, you know, around working on the business, right? But so initially when I, so I did my, my few years of masters in marketing, I was still consulting back into sport and rec to a degree. Um, but anyway, um, initially, particularly the first year, like I was terrible in B&I as well, right? Cause I really was, I was startup. I was trying to work out what I was doing as marketers. We most want to work with brands, right? So we, I wanted to work with the AFL or Nike or yeah. something like that. Right. Um, and I was lucky enough to get a gig with the basketball Melbourne Tigers and then a software company at one point. Right. Mm. But then someone said to me, Oh, you should come along to my business network. We do referral marketing. And I'm like, what the heck's that? <laughs> oh, yeah. heard of that. I've just done three years. I've never heard never of that heard term. Of it, yeah. right? right. So anyway, I went along, joined first year. I reckon I got one new client, but it was all on me. Right. Because mm-hmm. effectively I was thinking corporate brand marketer. Yeah. Uh, And so for my first year in business, I reckon if I was lucky, I I know I got enough to make me think, okay, well, that's probably enough that I'll rejoin the second year. Mm -hmm. But then I had to reframe, you know, what my service and offering and how much it costs and all that sort of stuff, right? To bring it down to the small business level. Um, And and then I've I've got this view that it's always from the grassroots, right? So Mm -hmm. because I was grassroots sport and then I was into small business, it's like grassroots business, right? It's the real business level, yeah. 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 Um, But for the first year or two, I felt spectacularly unsuccessful, right? (laughs) And yet I I got to about um, maybe into my second year, maybe it was even the third year, right? And at that stage, I was trying to scale, right? I was thinking, okay, I've got to scale. If I scale, I'm going to be successful, Mm. right? But then I hit a point that sort of said, well, okay, actually, I'm now earning what I used to earn back in the day in local government. And if someone had said to me when I left uni (laughs) that, you know, within two years, you're probably going to get back to pretty much where you were that time. I would have gone awesome. Right. Yeah, yeah. But at the time I was thinking, oh man, I'm still not successful. Right. But in a way it's that soul. I think there's an element of soul. You know, if you want to work and run your own business, the first success you can have is just to create yourself a living. Yeah. Right? So that's the job. That's, that's your first success. Job. Right. Yeah. So I, I say yay to those people, right? So if you're busy enough and that's what you want to do, I know that it took me a while to realize that after two years, I'm successful yeah. as a consultant. I'm successful. Right. And, um, and, and, and maybe it was by the third year I thought, okay, well that's success. I'm, I've made it. And so in actual fact, then for about a year, I was actually thinking I'm actually content. I don't know that I want to scale. Ah, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, a question you so ask, yeah. and yet, and yet you often get, and you do meet people. I'm sure you've met people in mm. B and I, they could be sparkies. They could be doing whatever. They're very content with whatever they're making yeah. and it's giving them a good living. And no, and no dickhead boss to have to talk to, yeah. right? Other than themselves, if they're a dickhead. Yeah. But, but ultimately, um, I think that success in terms of you were talking about working on the business. So I guess the first thing that you want to work on with the business and with your marketing is to be successful where you're at. Yeah, exactly. If yeah. you're a sole trader, be successful at that, right? Yeah. If you want it to scale, then that's a different. That's that's different because then you need to probably speak to a business person or somebody that's going to help you we went through a franchise program in terms of how i scaled my business Mm. because i didn't have that knowledge right in terms of how do i scale it right and i don't necessarily know that marketers are the best people to talk to with scaling your business right systems and processes in correct right so we talk systems yeah right systems is key right Mm. so so yeah so to you i think you're asking around that sort of um growth and 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 growing Often what we would then do is that's where the network comes in, right? Yeah. The business network is incredible, right? You and I are talking, you're in Adelaide. Yeah. I wish I was at your pub. What pub are you at? The Duke of Brunswick. I'd love to be at that pub. It's a great I think we've got it. I'm sure. How many Duke of Brunswick oh, do you reckon? Few. There's one in Melbourne somewhere. In, I was yeah. going to say in Australia, I reckon there'd be a few Duke yeah, of Brunswick. Is yours a good one? Well, we're Australia's only certified gluten-free pub. So our kitchen's yeah. entirely gluten-free. So we, we think we're pretty good. Um, I'm going to Littlefoot Bar tonight for oh, Footscray Traders. We've got our yeah. Footscray Traders meeting. So um, if you ever come to Melbourne, um, yeah, we'll come and out. have a have a beer in the West um, yeah. at a Littlefoot Bar. So Stu's the president yeah. and uh, I'm the long-serving tri- uh, secretary. Nice. Um, but, but, yeah, so there are a lot of them are bars and cafes and yeah. bricks and mortar oh, type Melbourne's businesses got, in the Traders. Yeah, yeah, Melbourne's got a great vibe for that. I lived there for five years. It was the best. Um, but that brings me on nicely to it's time for us to wrap up. But I think we've um, covered a really important point, which is like it's okay to be happy and successful where you're at and mm. it's okay to want to scale. But if you want to scale, get the right advice 
And that's not always about throwing dollars in uh, at a marketer to get leads for you. Sometimes you need the systems in the process. Could be, yeah. Sometimes. So, yeah, um, Steve, thanks very much for joining me on the podcast and uh, I'll look forward to catching up with you soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Simone. No worries. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Seriously Social. Check our website for the latest news, show notes, and for details about Simone's latest book, Confident Networker.